Good morning. Kalimera. Gnaiden. Good morning everyone. Hello everyone. Good morning everyone. Hello girls and boys. Kalimera. Bonjour madame et messieurs. Hello. Bonjour à tous. Bonjour, Bonjour à, à tutti. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Today, looking at this parliament, we are fully convinced there is a real opportunity of building a future together. If the previous European Union was the union of peace, prosperity and democracy, we should reflect on what it is the 21st century European Union. A union where radical environmental action is taken, where climate justice is everywhere, where the ones in charge do not doom the generations that will come. Where we stand as one, as one single voice in a troubled world, where we can show the world that there is still hope, where moral values are still above economic interests. May money never again in our history speak louder than nature itself. The only people who can fight for this Europe are us. So, do not sit back and simply watch everything fall apart. Rise and fight for your ideals. To fight for a new utopia is in part building it. Merci à tous. Tschüss alle Leute und danke schön. Vive la démocratie, vive l'Europe. Zaslo dievča baví v tom zelenom háji prišli k ňemu dve mladenci poď ty dievča s nami I would like to thank you very much for, for allowing me to be here. You know, I accepted uh, the invitation. Uh, of course, uh, it's uh, so lovely to be able to uh, talk to students about uh, the European project. It's our common uh, project. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here, as I said, to have this uh, uh, debate, and I hope that we were able to push ahead with a, a dialogue together. Good morning, sir. I have a question about the future of the European Union. We have long heard about uh, a, a very known expression, the United States of Europe. My question is, what's supposed to get there? What's supposed to create a European Federation? Thank you, sir. Es gibt viele Begrifflichkeiten. There are many different uh, concepts and terms that uh, cover working together and cooperation. I think that we all agree that uh, if we talk about the United States of Europe, then we don't mean the United States of America, and it's not like that. I think what is decisive is that when we think about questions like that, and when we think about issues where no country can solve problems alone and where it's about the role of Europe in the world, then the competences and responsibilities and uh, instruments uh, uh, need to be at our disposal, allowing us uh, to work together. And I don't think that we have that yet at the level of Euro uh, foreign policy. I think it would be uh, good to have uh, a common uh, foreign policy at the level of the European uh, Union, and that's why I think we should change uh, our voting uh, system so that uh, uh, people like uh, Auburn and others uh, can't block uh, what we're, we are uh, trying to do to meet uh, citizens' uh, expectations. This is I'm talking about defense policy, security policy as well. I'm talking about uh, uh, the question of uh, combating uh, the uh, reasons uh, for migration. I think we need uh, a, a common uh, policy in relation to uh, Africa, in relation to foreign investments as well. Think about uh, a tax uh, 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 havens as well. Think about uh, other uh, fiscal uh, uh, matters and uh, how these affect uh, smaller uh, companies. I think that we need to have uh, uh, joint uh, policies, common policies that uh, enable us to overcome injustices at the level of uh, fiscal uh, policies and so on. Now, of course, uh, there's the digitalization, uh, the energy uh, market, uh, uh, the social pillars at the level of the European Union as well, and I, uh, they need to be taken uh, further as well. I think we need to do more to uh, overcome uh, obstacles uh, so that we can uh, 
we are more competent to act, uh, whether it, we call it uh, the European Union or the United States of Europe. It's uh, irrelevant, really, how we actually call it. Um, it has more to do with how uh, the competencies are distributed uh, within the European uh, Union. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, this is a very important uh, uh, matter, but actually what is the most important thing is to strengthen European democracy, to ensure that uh, European citizens can participate, can act, so that there is more European uh, awareness and so that uh, uh, we do what we can to uh, combat uh, uh, populists uh, and uh, nation nationalists that uh, we do what we can to overcome those problems. Uh, yes, hello, my name is Freya, I'm from Sweden, and my uh, question is the following. What are your thoughts on the fact that uh, some already established uh, member states of the EU um, are limiting their democratic rights, uh, such as freedom of press? I think it's scandalous, and I think that we need to do something about it. Where there are violations of rights or where there are restrictions of, of the press, because that is one example, you know, we, we, if we think about Poland, Slovakia, Malta, Romania, Hungary and others and other countries indeed as well, you know, uh, we need to do something and I'm very glad that the European Parliament uh, is uh, uh, so uh, keen uh, to ensure that uh, these rights and freedoms are respected. We can't have violations like this because uh, they uh, damage uh, what is going on elsewhere. They uh, um, weaken uh, the credibility of the uh, European uh, Union. There are uh, infringement proceedings against uh, some member states. Uh, and I think it's uh, regrettable that uh, laws aren't fully implemented. We have to have a uh, a good uh, sanctions uh, system, I think. We're doing this in relation to the multi-annual um, financial framework uh, as well. I think that uh, there will have to be monies uh, paid back or money that uh, isn't uh, paid out where there are violations. I think there is a, an important uh, role for uh, a court here as well. I think uh, that uh, it is important to uh, leave the last uh, decision to uh, uh, courts, and I think uh, there is uh, a need for various uh, procedures to be taken against the black sheep uh, of uh, the European Union. It uh, we have to have uh, uh, respect for law and respect for our common values. That's absolutely vital for the European Union. Thank you. Uh, the U European Union is the biggest marketplace in the world. Uh, do you intend to attract another uh, marketplaces, and uh, which will give a um, bigger uh, power to the European Union? Thank you. Sie haben recht, dass der you are right. It's true that the uh, single market, uh, a single market economy in Europe is a very big uh, economic uh, market. Uh, it really is. And, uh, you know, we are in a position, however, now where the, it's more dynamic sometimes outside uh, uh, Europe. And, uh, you know, we have our various uh, programs, and of course, uh, to uh, improve the situation for us, but uh, look at Asia and Latin America and Africa, that's where it's much more dynamic sometimes now. So it may be that uh, our uh, share uh, of the economy is going to reduce by some 10%, although we're going to be as strong as before. But I think there are three concerns we need to address. The barriers within the single market need to be uh, reduced. Uh, the European Parliament has done a study uh, into this and it showed that the costs of, of the blockades 
are massive and therefore if we are able to reduce those barriers then we would actually be able to grow by three percent more our growth would go up by three percent I think that our we have to have as our top priority that we do restrict and reduce these barriers then secondly um, Trump and uh, Putin uh, must uh, not uh, uh, allow to dictate wh what we do. I think that we have to have a, a social order that we are creating and we uh, think that a first step towards improvements would be a, a reform uh, of the World Trade Organization. Then there are the uh, trade agreements. Uh, I think that uh, there is a risk uh, that uh, uh, we are going to lose out uh, through uh, digitalization and we must ensure that that doesn't happen. We have to uh, push uh, forward our uh, values and so on and uh, conclude uh, trade agreements uh, so that uh, we have uh, a, a global uh, economic, a social and economic order, that one that we can rely upon and uh, so that we uh, can be sure that the agreements we have are between us and different regions are respected. I think that uh, Europe uh, needs to be uh, more independent in relation to other regions of the world and we need to be stronger as well. As we mentioned Yugoslavia, uh, it, separ it separated because a lot of countries were like not together very well. <laughs> is that same for European Union or is it getting stronger and bigger only? Okay, so let's go back to the um, Western Balkans. Admission into the European Union is only possible, and this is something that President Juncker has said over and over again, it is only possible if the problems among these various countries, the border problems, for instance, are all solved before accession. The European Union stands for stability, and that is what we want in Europe. We don't want to promote instability. Now, second, if within the European Union member states do not all agree on a country's application to join the European Union, because you see, there's one thing that you must take into account, and this is that the European Union wants all countries to respect each other, that they should all be ready to discuss things and to reach compromises. So it's not avoiding conflict, obviously, that I'm, we're talking about, political conflict, conflict on the substance. Of course, these can exist. However, these conflicts can only be overcome if there's full respect of the fundamental values of the European Union. And I therefore hope that the European Union will be able to continue building this project up in the light of what has been done in the future with a view to reinforcing cooperation among all countries. For me, that is Europe. So, uh, self-sufficient energy production and sustainable also. Uh, to, uh, EU climate goals must be much more ambitious than they are at the moment to stop all new fossil fuels exploration prospections, uh, to have sanctions on EU members that don't comply to their uh, uh, environmental goals, uh, investment in renewable energies adapt to each country, lighter taxes for renewable energy investment, improving transportation system to promote sustainable transportation of people and promoting purchase of electric cars, promoting the circular economy, and promoting energy democracy, to improve civic ecological education, education not only at schools but also in the communities and in advertisements, to promote more sustainable habits of eating, reducing meat consumption, promote projects and campaigns for ecological and sustainable behaviors, ban all single-use plastic, and the question, is it possible to pursue economic development without uh, 
without endangering the planet, the group had a consensus of yes. The media should not categorize, categorize you even if you did something bad, like get into a car crash or hurt somebody or, you know, something not major. But anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate on that. The media, sh or so basically what I'm saying is, let's say I get in a car crash tomorrow, it shouldn't be put out what religion I am, it shouldn't be put out what race I am, what colour I am, where I'm from. It should just be this set person got into a car crash. And I think this is important because a lot of people suffer for things that they didn't do. And if the media maybe took a different look on things and maybe not focus so much on race and religion, there'd be a lot less discrimination against certain types of people. The most important thing about personal data is keeping it secure. The European Union is obliged to survey and watch social media giants such as Facebook and Instagram. If a country breaks these rules, measures must be taken to, uh, measures must be taken to ensure this does not happen again. So as you all know, there's been a lot of very scandalous things going on with social media and I think that these tech giants are, are getting off lightly, you know, so that's, that's my speech. Um, we got a lot of ideas for advertising um, voting. One of them is a human library. It's about people that are in the European Parliament who take time to give kids and young adults information about the European elections. Um, another one is about social media. Advertising in social media is a very good idea because a lot of young adults are getting influenced by it. Like, we could also um, have an internet voting system because being, um, knowing that you are only a few clicks away from voting will definitely be a big change. Um, but also in school, I think that you can have classes and teachers should definitely talk about European elections because they are very important. About legislation, we decided that we think having the same laws for voting in every country is the best. Also, we agreed that 18 is the best age for voting. But on the other side, every country that is in the EU should have their own separate laws in general, except for ele elections, because every country has their own culture and ideology. We, as the European Union, has a, have a lot of qualities and we should show them and not force them to countries. We should set an example. Second of all, uh, we should set uh, education standards uh, for all the countries in the European Union. Um, in that way, uh, when you live in a certain country and you want to move to another country, uh, you can still study there because you have uh, some kind of basics uh, that you can work on. Um, and third thing is uh, the life standards. We should uh, make sure they're, they're the same in all the countries of the European Union until some degree. Uh, we should look at hygiene and uh, other stuff. Just making sure everyone lives quite the same. Uh, sure, there will be some difference, but in certain measures they would be the same. And uh, we think there should be more attention to the environment, as uh, they already said. Um, I'm not going to go in detail because uh, uh, it's already done. But uh, yeah, we, should th uh, we think there should be more attention to it. Thank you. Is that every country should take an amount of migrants according to their economical and demographical standards. We also said that migrants people that are sent to a country must stay in the country for a minimum of time to be educated so we can guarantee a proper integration for the migrant and the country. To sum up, we are all agreed that we are talking about, a human, about human people who didn't have a choice for to leave their countries. So it should be taken to it to be taken with respect and tolerance. Finally, I conclude this speech with one main idea. We want an, an, an Europe educated with tolerance, respect, humanity, and most important, solidarity. Or, transla or, or translated to my mother language, o somos uno o no somos nada.
We came up with many points. One of these being that we are going to bring educators, students, and employers together through assemblies where they will discuss the requirements needed to get a certain job. And this discussion between the employers and the students will lead to a common ground where these people can agree on the requirements and uh, make up how difficult or how easy it is to get a job. Moreover, for our second point, uh, we agreed that we should have representatives from countries with low youth unemployment meeting up with uh, representatives from countries with high youth unemployment. Uh, this will be done through EU-funded seminars and meetups where the countries with low youth unemployment can teach how they've managed to keep these great standards to countries that are facing the problems of high unemployment. Furthermore, we said that uh, we must subsidize and publicize the websites that will show the job opportunities from each member state. Thus, somebody from Cyprus, let's say, can see a job that's in Italy and travel there through what they've seen online. Uh, this will make the whole EU uh, job scheme more binding and together, making it easier to find jobs, thus decreasing the unemployment rate. Uh, 